quickly enter your optimization suites into MG Plus, simulate it, and then post-process the results in Excel. So I'm going to go to Energy Plus and navigate to my new baseline. And in here, I'm going to edit this and change it to File, Save as 31 Installation. And I'm going to change my wall insulation to 300 millimeters. And I'm done with that one. The next improvement I've got is improved glazing. So I'm going to switch to the passive solar glazing here, which um, is in the constructions again. I'm going to sa uh, save this as 32 glazing. And I'm going to change the glazing to, I'm going to use a really good one here, uh, triple clear low E, high solar heat gain coefficient wood. So that should be a low U value and, and high SHGC. And then I'm also going to change my blinds here to do the same thing. I'm going to save that. The next one I've got is weatherproofing, so infiltration. And I'm going to go down. I'm going to save this. Remember to save as you go. This is really critical. 33 infiltration. And I'm going to go down to my infiltration object and change this from 1 to 0 0.1 and save. The next one is localized fans, so I'm going to use no ducks. And if I go to the model inputs calculator, um, I can go to the fan tab and see that the fan pressure drop for uh, localized ventilation units is 300 pascals. And in Energy Plus, I can go to my fan and change it to 300 pascals here and here. I'm not using this fan, so I'm not going to bother to change it. I'm going to save this as 34 fans. And then back to the dashboard LED light. If you remember back to the initial energy model uh, template, there was a tab here called lighting. And in this one, you can see the uh, difference that LED lights would make if you have good quality LED lights. It's about 100 lumens per watt. If you're replacing incandescent lighting, which is your standard um, sort of 100 watt light bulb, uh, that is about six and a half times more efficient, the LED is. In the case of Worcester, most of the lights in the computer lab are linear fluorescent, so it's only about 1.7 times more efficient going to LED. So going back to my IDF editor, I can go up to my lights and instead of 20 watts per square meter, I could make that, let's say 12 watts per square meter. Save this as 35 lights. Then the next one is equipment. I'm going to use energy efficient equipment in here. So instead of 2000 watts, I'm going to change this down to 1500 watts. And I will save this as 36 equipment. And then the last thing is the heating system. And to model this, uh, a better heating system with heat pumps and radiators, I um, can actually post-process that using the COP in the file, which is uh, this right here. So actually, before I forget, I should probably input these guys. Okay, so I've entered all these. Now, um, the only thing left to do is to, to uh, run the simulations. And you guys all know how to do that. You can browse to each one and then run it with your correct weather file. When you simulate, make sure you're checking for errors for each one. And then 
Uh, for this assignment, you're going to want to look primarily at the tables files. Uh, so again, copy the table into here, get the end use uh, from here, and then input that into the columns at the, the bottom here to get an EUI. And then your graphs will populate. And I've gone ahead and run all this. And just like the cooking shows, an hour later, we've got the, um, this nice progression of energy efficient measures as they go from the baseline to insulation to glazing, so on and so forth. Um, and then this one over here would represent the entire suite because these are all cumulative. Uh, interestingly enough, you can see that this wall insulation, which was my first thing to make my thermos, uh, had some effect. It changed, uh, it reduced the heating a fair amount, but not a huge effect, which is surprising. You can see that the triple glazing um, made much more of a difference and the infiltration made even more of a difference. So those were some very interesting uh, synergies. It could also be possible that if you reverse the order in which you do these, so maybe do the infiltration first and I did the glazing second and then the wall insulation, you'd see a much bigger difference in the percent change uh, from one to the other. So it's another thing to experiment with if you have the time. But um, and, and actually, you should see also down at this end, as I reduce the lights and the equipment, you also see some, some pretty dramatic changes that will also then impact the heating and cooling again. Now, one thing that is true is that um, when you have the heating, cooling, process loads, equipment, hot water, ventilation, everything in this graph, it sometimes can be difficult to see what changes um, are responsible for what. This is one method of uh, visualizing the data, but you can also copy this graph. Let me uh, do this for you. I'm going to copy this and I can, I'm just going to do this off to the side for a second. I can copy this and delete the things that are kind of not of interest to me. So the process, equipment, lighting, heating, uh, hot water. I'm just deleting these as I go. And if I can't, uh, it's too small to actually select. I can go up to format and then go down to hot water and delete it. And as we do this, I'm going to delete the ventilation as well. You'll notice that the vertical scale is changing, but you can also see now a lot better the impacts on heating. And, and as a result of the heat, it being heating dominated, I can't really see so much what's, what's the cooling impact. So I could further copy that and paste it and then delete the heating. And then I would see a lot better what impact things have on the cooling. So for instance, this, um, move from triple glaze to infiltration um, dramatically increased the amount of cooling, but it's actually not, it's, it's relative to itself. It's, um, it's not a large number in any case. So, um, so that could be a useful tool to analyze the uh, impacts of the different measures. Another tip that might be helpful for you right in Excel is to uh, use some lines to annotate the graph. Uh, it'll help you to, to see things a little better. So I can go up here to insert and then shapes and then there's a line shape here and I can draw this across, maybe change the um, change the color to something and maybe change the weight to something a little thicker. There we go. And you can do this in InDesign as well. Uh, but I like to sometimes do this right in Excel, so as I'm working, I can see what I'm doing a little better. So if I just draw a, a line across where the baseline is, I can see a lot better the relationship, how much energy I'm now saving in it for each of these. And I can um, copy this by clicking on the shape, pressing Control-C, and then Control-V, and doing the same here, so I can see the relative impact right in the graph. So. I hope those tips help and um, I hope this is a fun exercise for you. After you finish the first suite, um, please then go on to your second suite and third and fourth and fifth, as many as you 
uh, want to create, you must create at least two, but it's a good exercise to try to create a few different ones. It'll get your mind thinking in different ways. And uh, one piece of advice is to, when you conceptualize it, I've done in this case um, kind of a thermos chicken coop slash pyramid. Uh, another way of approaching this is rather than uh, a sort of hybrid is to reinforce some of its intrinsic properties. So Worcester is uh, right now a chicken coop pyramid, but I could choose one or the other and make it more like a pyramid and less like a chicken coop. And so reduce the infiltration, reduce the ventilation, but increase the thermal mass and, uh, and increase the shade and see what happens. Or I could even reduce the window to wall ratio. Keep in mind that we're gonna continue to work with these suites moving forward. I, I hope that you'll come up with some really effective ones this week and then next week we're going to fine-tune them even further.